and welcome again ladies and gentlemen fantastic to see you here and uh, of course we're on inflation watch as we're expecting the number out in about 14 minutes just let me know you can hear and see me okay that will be sensational it's not doing too bad thanks you and it's just about there <laughs> yes but it's been such a long time when hi sonia good day doug cheers guys hi lita good on you lita that's a big call well done that's commitment uh, i'm very impressed that you guys made it along i know it's uh it's late in the day for some of you so i'm delighted to be here and delighted to welcome you along to the party and um obviously put this up very quickly because there's stuff i need to cover before the number comes out um obviously the views and opinions a mine not shared by go markets it's for educational purposes only so I, there will be education in that it's not just having a look at the number i'm going to talk a little bit about context i'm going to talk a little bit about some rules of the game all that being said let's let's get into it so i've, I've put up two charts here uh, one is a 12 month historic cpi and these are the uh, as i said 12 month figure so it looks back at the last 12 months and this is why there's the market twitch at the minute this goes back to 2020 uh, sorry 2002 we have to go all the way back to 1974, I think, um, to see inflation at this high previously. That you can see there, it dropped through the floor post-pandemic, uh, and you can see there where we are right now. Uh, and this is the all-encompassing uh, CPI. Now, obviously, we've talked about food and energy um, raising prices, and you can see that this is the uh, the, the energy price in terms of its uh, inflation so up uh, in excess almost 30 percent now the other light blue line which you can just about make out is the food prices so you can see they're higher than than the red line the red line is what the uh, underlying number is outside of um outside of uh, food and energy so you can see that although food and energy are contributing we're still at highs not seen for many years. So it's not just about that, there's the supply issues, et cetera, and, and, and that's all really important. So uh, also in, in context, arguably in most situations, the number one determinant on central bank action, as we've talked about before, is uh, CPI. The central banks have a mandate to keep growth at a sustainable level, which is usually thought to be somewhere between two and two and a half percent. So it makes the current figure look very scary and so what they do is they try to slow down spending by increasing rates when jobs and job situations in a good place and um, inflation is high and then uh, to a lesser degree they'll keep an eye on other economic data to make sure that we don't smash it into submission uh, with a too vigorous price uh, sorry, uh, rate rise the challenge particularly in this situation is the uh, is the presence of economic slowdown so the the goal is to control inflation whilst maintaining some growth and that's why the market was somewhat appeased by jerome powell last week saying expecting a soft landing for the economy uh, some people who are short um and, and a lot of the hedge funds uh, didn't like that very much because it meant that they weren't going to make quite as much money so they sort of grossly protested on um on uh, finance news channels but the, this worry of stagflation, which is no growth and high inflation, is 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 a, a term you'll keep hearing. I'm guessing over the next two or three months. And additionally, uh, the cause of inflation, not standard from a historical perspective. I've talked about this before at length. There are all the supply issues in there. Um, there's the commodity prices, not just oil, but also soft commodities as well, which are uh, significantly higher than would be the norm so that all being said with any data there's a number of whoop, number of forces at play uh, that will determine determine market response including to what's priced in already the degree to which the number that comes out differs from the expected and essentially and particularly with something like cpi interest rate decisions uh, and jobs data there's a recalibration of market thinking um, with those being two key issues in central bank policy and, and this not impacts just on related assets or sorry directly impacted assets such as the finance uh, such as the the fx market but also indirectly affected classes such as stock markets 
uh, etc. And market players, of course, including EAs uh, across multiple time frames or position and reposition immediately prior to and more acutely afterwards. So we'll often see pre-volatility as well as post-volatility, but of course, that we often get that massive knee jerk when that data is released and then the market settles down to decide where it's at high need. So that, that context put in place, uh, you, your trading responsibilities whenever you're, um, whenever you're coming up to such a data point is, is really to recognize and mitigate risk and, and also accept that what you thought may happen may not actually mirror market behavior and market response. We, we referenced the non-farm payrolls in the Inner Circle session just before there, and that was a typical example of that. So you've got a couple of choices with open positions. Do you exit pre-announcement, or do you just adjust your stop accordingly so you're at less risk? And with potential new positions, do you delay entry until after we see the response or run the gauntlet and enter it anyway? Um, we may uh, look to use pending or, or uh, orders rather than market orders, simply because the market can move very, very fast, and we may see that. And we may not, of course, if the number comes in pretty damp. And then we've got also to consider the fact that the markets will be even more volatile uh, on the shorter time frames for a period of time. And so therefore, uh, let's say the standard move on Euro USD was on a 15 minute chart was 20 pips. During this time in the post, uh, in the post data release, then we may see something a little more spectacular than that. Hence, if you have your stop too close, it may just get taken out by that rapid market noise. Uh, slippage is also an issue if there's a big market move, of course, which makes it somewhat difficult with market orders. So, but you accept that that's part of the game in some of what you're trading. So let's just check in on where things are now pre pre data. Uh, if we look, uh, we'll just quickly look at the futures. We've invested time in this already today, but you can see they're looking pretty strong. Uh, that might change on a on a uh, in a heartbeat. Uh, if we look at the Nasdaq, always worth if you've got the time. Always worth, uh, as I've suggested before, always worth identifying those key daily levels. And then we'll go to the uh, five minute chart. So we'll go to the 15 minute chart just for a little less noise, maybe even the 30 minute. Take it out just a little bit. And you can see the market, as often happens, is positioned uh, around about a key level, in this case, around about 12,500. Uh, and we've got initial. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just color that different. Uh, just so you've got a reference point when it does happen, of course, on the five minute chart, you can see it trading in between. That you can see that volatility has just risen a little bit from where it was, uh, where it was in the sort of early European session. But of course, we've got this big move up, so we've not got a massive amount of increased volatility at this stage. Uh, also, of course, we need to look at the USD. Uh, we can look at any asset class. We'll put it on the five-minute chart on the COP. We'll check in on that after the number comes out, and we can do exactly the same on the Dow. These are the two lines that we put in place. Uh, on the daily chart and, and really because we're trading towards the top of that range uh, then uh, that will hold true to that and keep those as uh, good indicators of potential moves so in this case we'd sort of possibly look to move up a couple of hundred points on the Dow uh, and certainly down a couple of hundred points but if it is a very bad number we'll see it possibly trail all the way down back to that test these lows and that's the worry that this precipitates another market massive reaction now of course we can also as well as looking at the indices overall we can look at the vix let's just pop that on a minute chart oh, no, that's too noisy let's put it on a 15 minute chart um so you can see 32 is important 30 is also important in terms of a technical level so we'll put a line down there as well actually we've got one there as well on 30 let's just uh, reset that um so if we get a soft number in we'll get a soft and expected number in we'll get that move if otherwise we'll get the move up to 32. so where are we at then in terms of um right i'm going to give you this i really like this this is a link to that um i'll make sure that this is up for the whole session 
This is a link to our inflation charts I've got, and there's all sorts of stuff on here. Uh, this is the Bureau of Labor Statistics from the US. Um, might be worth a look, and um, some interesting stuff going on there. If we look at what's expected, which is obviously one of the key things we look at then, what we are expecting is essentially on the headline number, which is the year on year figure, uh, we're expecting a drop from last month from those 40 year highs at 8.5 down to 8.1. Ex food and energy, you can see the difference that food and energy has made. It's around about 2%, uh, but we're looking to move down half a percent to around six. And the month on month figure is really less important, but we'll want to see that. That's actually expected to grow a little bit. That's interesting. Um, but we'll want to see that down or, or, or around expectations. X food and energy. Uh, so that's interesting. And you can see there that uh, although food and with food and energy was expected to be high uh, or was higher last month. Uh, then X food and energy, you can sort of see that we're expecting a little bit of a reversal going on. Sorry, have I? Yeah. Uh, how will this affect the FTSE and DAX? Well, uh, good question, Peter. I, I would expect it to impact. Let's uh, I'll stick with the Euro USD. Uh, we'll stick that on a five minute chart. Um, we'll put the FTSE and the DAX on as well. I want to keep Aussie USD there. Not interested in the yen just yet. But you would expect it just to, you would expect the FTSE and the DAX, the, the US is the dog that wags the rest of the world's tail, unfortunately, with financial markets. So you would expect a similar sort of response, though not quite as acute uh, in the FTSE and the DAX. You see the FTSE is a bang smack on 7,300 almost. That's really interesting. A really nice day at the office. And again, what you'll see is it reverting back towards that critical level there uh, here on the 30 minute chart, which you can see on the daily chart is important. It's around where the 200 MA is. Uh, and if we just check out the DAX, bring it all in. Uh, again, around a sort of important level there, around about 13,700. Looks as though it's actually trying to break through that. Um, so that's interesting. Just stick on the 15 minute chart. You see, it's actually had a good, quite a good run. So we're about a minute away from the data. Uh, sometimes there's a delay of a few seconds um, while the data comes up. That's the next point on the DAX to the upside. And that's the point on the downside. Hi, Michael. So we'll stick down a five minute chart as well. So We'll pop onto the one minute chart of the. Uh, whoa, there we go. It's out. There we go. Oh. So there you go. There's the movement that um, that suggests a, a, a stronger figure than expected. Uh, we'll look at the five minute chart. You can see there. One thing I didn't show, and but I will just now while we're waiting for that is we can have a look at a couple of stocks. Oh, you can see AMD pre market was over one percent up. You can see it's dropped almost a percent in a minute in terms of its pre-market action. Let's just keep an eye on this and I'll find the number. Uh, okay, so uh, let's just look at Forex Factory. I think they cannot find the one if that's updated yet. There we go, we've got the numbers in. And so higher than expected on the year on year, um, lower than last month though. Uh, Likewise, on the year on year without with um, without uh, without food, uh, again, lower than last month. And there's a month on month that's higher than expected as well. They're not good numbers uh, in terms of uh, likely to uh, mean that the Fed is going to be quite aggressive. And you can see the Nasdaq response. This. Now, it always looks very dramatic on a, on, on, on a chart. But you can see the second minute. Um, is looking the same way. We may get some profit taken in this in, in an not too distant future, but there's the move downwards on a, a longer time frame, just so you can see context. We suggested it might move down towards this 12,160. That was actually the close prices on the 30-minute chart at 12,200. 
uh, on the futures contract. So we'll see where that goes. Now let's just have a look across some other asset classes. Uh, there's the US dollar index spiking. Um, that's a really massive move in the USD. And we see that reflected with weakness in the Euro. Uh, that candle, that nice green candle that we had on the Aussie dollar has just about disappeared. And we look as though we're heading back with already through uh, 69,600. And let's look at the FTSE and the DAX. Uh, so there's the FTSE. Let's look at a five minute chart. You can see again, sell off in that. Not surprising level. Uh, may see it. Uh, that's the key level, perhaps on the shorter time frame, 30 minute. That it's, it's already tested. You can see how markets will go down and test these levels. See that time and time again. And there's the DAX. Uh, and here's the level that we need to, that's going to be interesting at the end of this five minute bar. Are we going to hold on to that level? Good to hear, Rod. I was hoping you were set up accordingly. But at this stage, uh, if we just look back at the five minute chart, we're still in the first five minutes. So we'll look at the minute chart. You can see markets are just sort of pausing at this, uh, this place. Uh, this is not a profit taking candle, it's a pause. We might have a little bit of profit taking going on. The next couple of candles are really important. Uh, if we look at the longer term picture on this, we remember we're wanting to hang on to 12,200. And of course, uh, that's the even shorter term resistance. If we look at the 15 minute chart, you'll see, uh, sorry, shorter term, yeah, it is resistance now. We've got shorter term supports so on the five minute chart. The fact it's holding above that is really quite positive. Made the markets turn around and say, well, look, that was pretty close to what we expected. It's not going to alter Fed policy. And it was actually lower than last month. So it's on a downward uh, downward trajectory. We'll look at Aussie US. There we go. Still sort of dropping down. Uh, the USD looks as though it's the major beneficiary of all of this. Not surprisingly, I'm just going to put on a US yen so we can check out that as well. This is important because uh, not only have we not got, we've got a key level there. So the US strength against the yen now. The next thing we want to do is we just want to check in. Let's just check in on our Canadian dollar yen and see if there's any flight to safety in the yen. And it looks as though there might be a little bit on that. You can say the Canadian dollar initially spiked and then dropped down. Let's have a look at the Aussie yen. Uh, and now you can see commodity based currencies struggling a little bit, uh, even against the yen. So a little bit of yen strength coming in compared to other currencies, particularly the commodity based currencies. And uh, that's where that's at now. It's really important. As I said, we're now five minutes. We're onto the next candle. Just check in on copper. Another risk on asset under threat, but managed didn't manage to hold on to that short term support on the five minute jab but on the 15. You can see once we take that wick out, it seems to have held on to around about 420. That's important as well. And as for the VIX, well, the VIX hasn't moved up a lot, uh, about a dollar. And I would expect Bitcoin's been hurt again, but we'll check in on that. I'm not sure why I've just put Delta Airlines up there. Oh, I don't know why I put that. So you can see that, that Bitcoin is also under a bit of pressure anything that's that's bad for markets and means money is coming off the table is bad for bitcoin so you can see that's dropped almost 800 dollars in the space of five minutes let's just check back on the nasdaq we just need to get a feel for where this is on the uh, five minute chart with that second and you can see we've got continuation now we're well and truly through two three hundred sorry twelve three hundred on that um yeah, this is looking a little kooky, uh, being the uh, the term. Would I still short Nasdaq? Uh, not until it breaks twelve two hundred. I wouldn't. Um, so <clears throat> that's the level I'm looking at. Uh, possibly even that on the hourly chart. Well, one eight nine. Look on the daily chart. That's that's where it's at really. Uh, so that's why I'd be cautious. Uh, as I said, I think on the inner circle, I, I, I see more um, 
less downside risk to upside potential at this stage. So um, it's just a case of when the market says it's had enough. And at this stage, we're not getting an obliteration. We're getting a, a what's that in terms of a move? That's quite significant. You can see it did gap. But we're down about 1.72%, which is, is, no, uh, is no small figure. And the fact that we'll keep on coming down, oof, look at the US dollar index. So whichever way you slice it, these are looking pretty. Um, see, this is a sort of trade I might short. I might look at the Aussie US and say, right, OK, 69.51. There's a fair chunk of pips to be had here. Uh, around about 15, 16 pips. I'm quite happy to scalp that off on this sort of move, uh, but wouldn't be. Uh, but you would look at this and you would say, well, actually, I wouldn't mind holding that for a little longer. Uh, great question, Johnny. Just to... so um, just keep an eye on the Nasdaq. That's now broken that pivot low. That's important. And we are heading down to that 12200 level. That's just uh, that's just pretty scary. There's copper down to 418. So you can see all there's the VIX up nearly to 33. Uh, so you can see all the risk on assets doing dreadful. And there's the Dow coming down to 32, uh, 32,000. That's a critical level on the Dow. So market's not liking that. They're certainly not liking those hotter numbers. With, with the priced in softer. They got a little softer, but not as soft as, as I'd suggested. And so the market is speaking. Um, now, the next response. <clears throat> so whichever asset class you're looking at, we're testing the lows that we hit in that first five minutes. So when would, great question, when would you go long on this? What would have to happen? Well, if we look at the euro, uh, the euro USD, uh, if I was trading a one minute chart, then that would be the line I would look at 105.30 simply because uh, that would be a, a double bottom form if it went up from here. It might do that. It might do that. So this this next market response is important. And then, of course, we're going to have the real deal response on uh, on the stocks. Uh, rather than just a stock future. So if we look at AMD, as I said, whoa, look at that. That's down about three, in excess of 3% from where it was pre-data uh, on in the pre-market trading there. Uh, so that's quite scary too, uh, in terms of where stocks may open. Of course, once stocks open, you often get a, uh, you often get a, I need uh, sort of extended response as well. Look at where the Nasdaq futures were before that day. This is delayed data. Look at where the Nasdaq futures were before that this data came out, and look at where it is now, minus 0.36. So really quite a, and that's five minutes delayed as well on this, I think. So that's quite a, a marked drop. Um, so uh, there we go. That's. Um, Let's just wait for the next sort of five minutes or so. Interesting. Look at what we found here. So there's that uh, there's that previous. So we want to hold on to this. Doesn't look as though we're going to. See the one minute. Uh, that, so that 12.189. See our markets like nice, uh, either nice round numbers or previous support levels. Certainly seeing that on the NASDAQ. If we look on the Dow, uh, if that was a closing low on a 30 minute chart, that's exactly where it got to. Um, which is below that 3200 level, which is interesting. A move through this could precipitate some more selling. Uh, it doesn't look as though we're going to uh, update at all. Uh, maybe a little bit. And um, we we'll look at the VIX. There's uh, there's 33. So that's gonna. We we'll just put that on an hourly chart to give us some context. So 34, I think, is a, an important level on the VIX. You can see that was. Closing high of an a cold closing high of an hourly bar, um, and on a daily chart, closing high for a long time was at 34.69. So um, wouldn't be surprised to see it retest that. 
Okay, ASX. Do I think it will go low tomorrow when the market opens? It will if this uh, if this continues. Um, bear in mind that the futures weren't that actually that high on on ASX open, but they were up. Uh, they were up about 0.7 percent, I think. Now, now, there's an easy way to tell. Of course, um, we can look at the ASX futures, which is the ASX 200. Uh, let's put it over the VIX. So um, we're looking at an hourly chart. How long is it since the ASX closed? It's twenty forty two. It's about eight hours. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's where. Um, I've got my maths right. That's where the ASX closed, or that's where the futures closed, and the ASX did. Uh, so we're down around about 0.3% um, from where we were at close of the uh, uh, of the um, of the index. And there's the five-minute chart. Once it had broken through that, that precipitated a little more selling. Um, so yeah, so it really looks, it's holding on by its fingernails, even this five minute candle has given up any gains at all, we might get a market smashed downwards. Now, what will happen then is the market's got a decision to make, uh, and it'll make, it'll, it'll ask the questions, A, is this going to alter Fed policy at all? Um, there's a fair chance it won't. But it certainly won't influence it to the better either. Those numbers that were expected aren't Fed changing numbers. So if we look at that, um, uh, if we look at that 8.1 percent, so a 0.2 percent difference, that's not a mark. That's not a central bank changing number. Uh, but of course, uh, and the headline will be that inflation has dropped from last month. Um, so. What we've got is a is a strange one, really, um, but it it does reiterate the fact that the market had priced in a little bit of a softer number. But really, the Fed's interest rate decisions haven't had a lot of time to bite yet. So that 0.75 percent to raise them by hasn't really um, made the massive uh, made a massive difference. So okay, uh, um, so it, it all looks a bit bleak, but Let's see where this goes after open. What we've done is we've we've gone down to key levels that we identified previously. US dollar index looks as though it's topped, uh, and gold doesn't look as though it's <laughs> moved hardly at all. On the back of that, the Dow looks as though it's trying to hold on, uh, certainly holding on to 3,200 uh, after that bleep uh, after that um, minor blip below. So that's going to be important. So if the, if the market doesn't believe uh, what's VIX, sorry, Peter, uh, the VIX is a, a measures volatility on options trading on the CBOE. So it's essentially a measurement of a, what's called implied volatility, which is forward looking volatility. So generally speaking, if the market is uncertain, the market is a bit scared, you tend to get the VIX rising. So there's an inverse relationship between the VIX and the S&P 500. That's it in a nutshell. Um, so it's actually a really useful measure, particularly if you're trading stocks, um, to get a feel for where the index is. If the index looks flat but the VIX is rising, it suggests that the market isn't that happy and we may get a move on the index to the downside. So VIX up, S&P 500 down. Um, so there we go. I'm just checking through the other questions. Uh, do I think we'll get another strong move at the open? I think it's very possible. Um, you've already got, and you're talking, of course, in the futures. So, if we get a, um, we're already expecting futures to, we're already expecting the markets to drop now. Uh, if we go back to that, interesting, you'll see which, of course, this was the outperformer by a mile 
earlier. And of course, now that we've had that bad news, uh, as is with everything, any any event, the Nasdaq always will respond harder to the upside and harder to the downside. So you can see the Russell is almost neutral. Uh, so much may depend on how this holds up. Interestingly, oil hasn't shifted at all. Um, so difficult call, you would expect a market response to that, uh, but not quite as great as they would have been if it had been higher than last month's number. That would have. So I expect a market twitch, but not a market capitulation. But it depends who's in. It may be that seller shakeout that says, look, let's just get rid of these people who are holding on of, and have now blown the stimulus chips because the market's dropped so much. Um, Let's check out cryptos. I just want to have a look at Bitcoin again to see where that's at. Because this is fascinating me. Oh, look at that. Bitcoin below 30,000. Wow. That's a big well. And now I thought this might precipitate some more selling, and it sure looks as though it is. Oh, look at that drop. That's dropping uh, significantly. So since that data came out, Bitcoin has dropped 5.5%. The fact that it's through 30,000, I, I said before, if it if it breaks that and gets some velocity behind it, you're, it could precipitate a mass of selling. So that's a drop of what, 2,000? There's those stimulus checks blown now because there's a lot of money went into Bitcoin when those stimulus checks were done. Let's say, anyway, let's see where it goes. Just quickly check on the indices. You can see there, it looks as though we're just about trying to find a bottom on the five minute. Now, you'll be able to tell because what will happen, um, last sort of key point, and I think you've probably had enough of me today, but what you'll see here is is on the on the minute chart we've definitely put in a bottom on the five minute chart looks as though it's trying to put it at a bottom but not yet we need to see this candle that's just almost ready to click over to the next one just like that we needed to see that above this level as well this is a crucial candle we need to see this above here as well and then we'll have a bottom in on the five minute chart then we'll start to look at the 15 as the next one at this stage. There's no evidence of a bottom on the 15. And of course, there won't be on the 30 or the hourly. So if we're going to see any recovery in any situation like this, this is the way we test whether it's actually happening or not. It's no good just having a look at one time frame. We need to move up the time frame to say one minute looks as though it's good. Five minutes looks as though it could be, but early in the game. If the next five minute candle does well, then we'll be looking at nine o'clock. Uh, on my time, 11 o'clock your time, to say, hey, look, the 15 minute looks as though it may have found a bottom. And then we'll start to get all these EA models kicking in after the, who, who are trading on the five minute. Uh, once it gets above 12,200 again, maybe. Uh, and we may, it may precipitate a move up prior to market open for half an hour or so. So don't think that if we get this within the next the 40 minutes before the market opens that this will be it. Uh, and even then, look at this, it's, it's still blasting through. As I said, this five, five minute bar looks really in, important. There's Bitcoin still going down now, 29,200. 30,000 is looking like a distant memory. Now we've nearly dropped oh, 8,900. There may be some, because of course, the other thing that this can be, is this can be you can see the usd creeping up again i wonder what's happening to bond deals we'll have a look at um but this may be because what we want to make sure is that this isn't profit taking and it looks as though it possibly was we haven't finished going down yet so anyway there you go there's the uh there's the uh, you notice the nasdaq nasdaq's getting hard getting hit harder uh, the dow's holding on on the one minute chart, on the five minute chart, looks as though it's tolling on, not yet on the 15 minute chart. So there you go. Anyway, when the NYSE opens, that's when the party begins. It will smash it with that. 
we'll uh, absolutely we'll um, we'll absolutely see some uh, we'll see some major volume uh, on open. Uh, please avoid that first 15 minutes uh, unless you're trading that first move and then have something very fast to get out of it because uh, that's often what happens with that big move one way, a little bit of profit taken, and then the market will decide what next. This stage, uh, market saying, I, we know what's next. Right across the board, we're through next support. So what's our job when we are through this support? Well, our job is to say, right, where's the next level? So we'll take our blue line now and we'll shift it down to there on the 30 minute chart. So 12,100 on the NASDAQ is where the next line in the sand is. That's look, that looks as though it's where it's heading. Anyway, look, I hope that's given you some things to have a look. It's always interesting when you're seeing it live happen and you, you can sort of talk about how markets may or may not be thinking. And But most importantly, you sort of go back and you take on board in terms of your trading responsibilities in this. I hope more than anything else, this has told you, uh, treat data with the respect, particularly the big pa uh, particularly the big data points that it deserves. Uh, let me know um, quicker. Yes, yes. If you want me to do this again, um, we'll possibly pick another big uh, data point. We'll not do it for the little ones, but maybe the next big one, um, uh, and we can sort of do it uh, do it again. Um, we'll have to be careful though. We don't want to. If we did the Fed interest rate, that'd be about like uh, three o'clock in the morning for most of you. Okay, appears to be absolutely categorical. We can certainly do it again. We'll pick our we'll pick our moments, uh, but it gives us a good chance to start to develop. And because the more you look at this, the more you're in a place to sort of think, well, how could I trade that? What would be my move and groove? And what asset classes would I look at? Oh, let's see. Oh, yeah, gold's starting to move down now. That's had enough of that as well. It's going to retest uh, 1833, possibly. Great stuff. All right, guys. Well, look, take care of yourselves. It's been great to have you along. You're so welcome, Victor. Thank you. Oh, Michael, good on you. Good on you. Well done if you uh, managed to make a couple of books out of this as well. Getting paid for listening to me. How good is that? Anyway, <laughs> you guys take care of yourselves, eh? And we'll see you um, if you can make it, um, it uh, steady, steady, Alison. Um, uh, better than watching a football match. I do need a beer. There's one already, already lined up. Uh, you guys take care. We'll see you tomorrow's live update if you can make it along. Um, oh, by the way, if you if you're not part of that, um, come and join the party. Let's just see where AMD is. I'll just pause that. Uh, right, if you're not part of that, let's just um, give you the link. So this runs every lunchtime. I know most of you are part of it anyway, but I'll just put it on. It runs every lunchtime at 12.30 Eastern time. We're running one tomorrow morning. So we'll see where the dust has settled and we'll make some judgments after that on to what next. With the Nasdaq now down a percent, uh, Nasdaq futures now down a percent rather than up over a percent, I think it's time to call it a day. So. All right, guys, you take care of yourselves. See you later. Bye-bye for now.